are joined now by Wales's First Minister, Mark Drakeford, who says the relaxed coronavirus restrictions at Christmas are not an instruction to meet with other people, although it looks very much like we can meet with other people. But you, Mark Drakeford, say that you were hesitant in agreeing to the nationwide deal. You have also admitted publicly this will lead to an increase in COVID infections. Why would you agree? Because the uh, choice was otherwise to have a free-for-all. Uh, I think it was very clear to us from the advice we received at the COBRA meeting, but also from what we hear in Wales, that unless we found a formula that allowed people to get together over Christmas, people were very unlikely to be willing to stick to the current level of restrictions that we have here in Wales. So the choice was between a guided form of meeting over Christmas or people simply making their own solutions. I mean, my issue with this is, if you take, you know, driving a car, you know, there are strict rules, aren't there, that apply to everybody about wearing a, a safety belt. Uh, you're not allowed to have alcohol and so on. And they, they're enforced legally. And people know if they break the law, they're going to be held to account. My problem with this is you say you're not encouraging people to all get together, but it's like the green light has been lit right across the country now for n huge numbers of people to all amass right at what many think is the crucial moment in the second wave of this pandemic. I mean, I don't want to be screwed any more than anybody else, mm. but I'm listening to all the scientists. and I'm like, well, why, why are we encouraging, actually, three households, which could be several dozen people in some cases, to come together for five days. It, it doesn't make any public health sense. Well, I think the word that uh, I wouldn't have used myself is encourage, because this is not a matter of encouraging people. It is finding a set of rules that give us a guided way to Christmas. Without the rules that we've agreed, I think the risk was very high that people would simply make up the rules for themselves. And, Piers, the big difference between driving a car is, is that everybody can see you on the highway. Everybody can check whether you are wearing a seatbelt. The way people behave inside their own homes is far less visible. And I wasn't willing to contemplate a Christmas in which people felt that police officers might be knocking their door, checking whether or not they are abiding by the rules. Well, we did contemplate... We did, if either. I may jump so in, we, we, did, we did contemplate, didn't we, in November, not allowing other religious festivals to happen in the normal way and to actually legally prohibit mass gatherings at those. And if I were a, a, one of those religions, I'd be thinking, well, why is it one rule for the Christians and one rule for us? I mean, it does seem like you've arbitrarily chosen... Christmas, and I accept it's the biggest religious festival in our country, but we didn't have the same criteria in November for the others. No, well, I think you're absolutely right, but I think you probably answered the question. It is because Christmas is the biggest of all our celebrations. Uh, I hope that other faiths will also use this opportunity to be able to organise some gatherings of their own to so be able to celebrate their own faiths as well to, using to get the together. opportunity. That, that, I mean, you've literally just said you're, you're saying, encouraging people to get together at, at Christmas time. What I'm saying is I'm answering the question that Piers asked me about the unfairness to other faiths and saying that the opportunity over Christmas of the modest relaxation will be available to them as well to erode some of the unfairness you that say otherwise modest, I you think say modest people my, would understandably feel. But, but my, mod, my response to the word modest is, well, it really depends on the size of your family. You know, I have a gigantic family, and normally there'd be up to 30 of us on Christmas Day. We decided several months ago we weren't going to do that, so I won't be with my family this Christmas. But, and I'm sure others will make that similar calculation. What worries me about this is already I can see all the excitement in the newspapers which is basically telling people Christmas is back on. And, you know, if people think they can have three households, they'll think, well, we can sneak a fourth in. No one's going to regulate it, as you've just said. You don't want, you don't want to regulate it. So actually, many people will just have a perfectly normal Christmas. If that involves many, many people, surely you have to accept, and this is the calculation that you will have all made as our leaders, you must accept that there will be a direct impact on the number of cases and therefore the number of hospitalizations and therefore the number of deaths. You know 
that by opening things up for five days like this, more people will die, don't you? Well, the choice was between a guided Christmas or a Christmas in which there was a free-for-all, in which there would have been even more risk of coronavirus spreading, even more hospitalisation. Actually, and there's, even a more people there's a third choice. There's a third choice. I don't agree with you. Lives. I don't agree with you. I'm sorry to jump in, but there's a third choice. You could have said, no, sorry, we've really got to bunker down. The vaccines are coming fast. They're going to be here in a few months. We only have to hang on a few more months. It would be utter, utter lunacy, frankly, for us to loosen things up. We know what happened what happened in the summer when we did this. And so what we're saying is we, we don't want any more than, say, one household to be together on Christmas. Now, you could have said that, but you've taken a deliberate PR-friendly option oh, because, you're, because worried about, you're worried about compliance. Well, you're worried about compliance, but compliance, you know, I think the compliance issue has been exacerbated by the fact that we haven't been enforcing any of the regulations and they've been so confusing to people. Uh, you could have just said, sorry, this Christmas is not going to be the same. One household. If you're in a bubble, you can be with your bubble. That's it. But you've deliberately chosen, as a group of leaders, to open it up. And I just simply say again that there is that calculation. And I'm not necessarily passing judgment either way. I just think you should be frank with us and say this the decision means more people will die. Well, Piers, I'm the First Minister of Wales, not King Canute. Uh, and the course of action that you're suggesting to me, I think, is a King, King Canute strategy, issuing an instruction that you know would not be obeyed. So my well, why have is any laws? Why have any laws me, there? Uh, that why, why have any lockdown? We just had a lockdown well, where because you, sh you shut down all sorts of things. Uh, it worked in Wales. You were very proud of the record of the the short circuit breaker. But you that was you know you basically told people this is what you're going to do. Um, you're not doing that at Christmas. And I just I, you know I'm playing devil's advocate because we've done a poll this morning. Seventy three percent of our viewers think, think this is a recipe for disaster. Um, and I just wonder why there isn't more leadership here and less desire to have PR-friendly headlines. Well, I can assure you that uh, our decision is not based on any headline-seeking. Uh, our decision is based on the calculation that this is the safest way, not a completely safe way, not a risk-free way, but the safest way that we can offer by giving people a limited amount of freedom, a set of rules that we think people can operate within, we will have a Christmas where people will be able to have an opportunity to see people they haven't seen for months and months in the toughest year they've ever been through, uh, but to do it in a way that does not mean that people will simply feel that the restrictions are so severe that they will take no notice of them. Well, now, most people in Wales would want to abide by the rules, but in coronavirus, you only need a small minority of people who decide that they're not prepared to do that, and that means the virus Mark spreads Jacob, again I'm and so that poses a risk to everybody. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but everybody. coronavirus doesn't appreciate that it's Christmas and doesn't think, OK, there's three household bubbles and therefore within the rules I won't affect those bubbles because COVID doesn't care. You've only got to have one person in one of those bubbles and then there's a whole load of people and it could be, you know, 30 people affected in three household bubbles, if you include the connections through childcare and the support bubbles as well, and big families. One of my issues is that there will, there will be families who, as you say, will, will take the choice to be more sensible, perhaps, um, and will decide, actually, I don't want to spend time with vulnerable relatives. But the fact of the matter is, if you've allowed other people to do that, come January, that's going to be an issue of spread for everybody, whether you um, did something smaller or you did the three household bubble. You know, what you've made is, is a problem for the whole community, never mind those people who kept it small or whether you went large. I think the problem with that proposition is that you are suggesting that there is one course of action that is problem free and another course of action that creates problems. That's not the situation that we faced. We faced a choice between a set of problems where we have created a set of rules, where we've got boundaries around it, and a set of problems that would be created in any case if we asked people to abide by rules that are so strict 
that people simply wouldn't be prepared to go along with them. Well, except it you've just literally, you except we've literally just had a national you can control. Well, we've just had a national lockdown in England for the last uh, month, which has been reasonably well observed. So people can take they can take direction. I think the, the worry is that everyone takes this as a green light. People who may not otherwise have got together will now be, well, it can't be that dangerous because the government's saying three households can get together. That's my concern about this, is that once again you've got the mixed messaging because, well, okay. because we know how dangerous the virus is. There's no sign of it losing any of its, uh, of its power or its deadliness. And we know the vaccine cavalry is coming over the hill. We only got to wait three, four months before this all starts rolling out. And I don't know why the leaders didn't say, you know what, sorry, everyone, you've got to knuckle down. Take one for the team. Because most of our viewers, I have to say, that's what they're thinking. Well, first of all, Piers, I agree with your concerns. I, too, am concerned that people will interpret what is being offered as an instruction to go out and travel, an instruction to meet lots of people, rather than permission to do so and a permission to be used carefully, responsibly and thinking through the consequences of the people you might meet and what this may mean for them. Uh, but I'm afraid I still believe that uh, issuing an instruction of the sort that you've just suggested, saying to people Christmas this year is cancelled, uh, that you can wait another few months, hang on, everything will be OK in the future, everything I see tells me that there will be too many people not willing to go along with that. All right. And it's Look. one thing to ask people to abide by these rules in November. It's a different thing at Christmas, which means so much okay. to so many I, people. I think we're making way too much of this. I've got to be honest with you. Well, I, Mark, I think, Jaffer, I think we've all built Christmas up to be this untouchable holy grail. The virus doesn't, doesn't, doesn't give a monkey's cuss what Christmas is. doesn't even understand it. Anyway, Hillary, you're raising your hand. Dr Hillary? Yeah, look, I, I think controlling the virus is like trying to control your weight. Uh, it's easy to put weight on. It's very difficult to lose it. It's very easy for transmission of the virus to increase. It's very slow to get those numbers down again. Mm. And by having this five-day holiday at Christmas I, I, and three households, which could be a, a large number of people gathering in a place with very little ventilation, all hugging each other, it's going to undo so much of the good work that's already been done. And I think the, the majority of our viewers uh, are, are together with this. They're saying, let's not sacrifice the good work. I look at some of the newspapers today, headlines on, on the I uh, newspaper, bubbles for Christmas in UK deal for families. We're talking about a deal. I, I, it's, it seems but incredible not to me. But not with A deal. Are we really such a weak nation that we can't wait a few more weeks mm. so that we, we can actually control this virus better? We've still got very high numbers. Wait for the vaccine and get on with our lives okay. next year.